Who do you think you are to ask Nick Saban for $800,000? And here's why it's so, the best word I can use is mind boggling to me, is because Nick Saban, he doesn't need your cornerback. He doesn't need your wide receiver. He's got plenty of them. You can say what you want about Nick Saban. I think for the most part, most college football fans, they like the guy. And even if you don't like him, I think you respect him. Even the people and the fans that despise Alabama, they like Nick Saban. There's a lot of reasons for it. It's not just because he's a great football coach and he wins a lot of games. We've seen a ton of great coaches win a lot of games and win some championships, and yet people still aren't fond of him. And a great example of that is Urban Meyer. And it's not just Urban Meyer. There's a ton of guys like that. Yeah, a lot of people like him, but a lot of people dislike him. So what's so different about Nick Saban, why do so many people gravitate towards him? Me, myself, I could point to multiple different reasons, but at the end of the day, it comes down to this. He has great integrity and great honor. No matter how many games and championships he wins, he still understands how hard it is to win week in and week out. He doesn't cheat the game. He doesn't cheat the system, and that's why people respect him so much. And ladies and gentlemen, what just happened recently, it's going to validate that even more. I want you to really think about this. Of every school out there, what is the one school that could take advantage the most of the this name, image, and likeness. Alabama, right? Look at Alabama. They're the gold standard. They're the best of the best. So if anybody was going to benefit from this name, image, and likeness, Alabama, they were going to be up there. But Nick Saban doesn't believe in doing things a certain way, and I agree with him. Let me make this extremely clear. I'm all for these players getting paid, but the NIL was created so players could get paid by sponsors, not schools. I'm going to repeat that because it's important and people don't understand it. Name, image, and likeness was created so guys like Bryce Young and Kayla Williams could sign sponsorship deals, not get paid by boosters. But the problem with college football at this current moment, and it is a major problem, and I'm going to continue to harp on it, is players are coming out of high school wanting millions of dollars and they haven't proved anything. I don't care if you're a five-star recruit. I don't care if you're the number one overall player in the country. You haven't proved anything at the college level. Why should any school pay you? That's how I feel, and I am so glad that my team and my head coach feels the exact same way. We're going to talk all about what's happened. Nick Saban has reportedly pretty much just kicked out two players because they were wanting money. Also got some other minor stuff to talk about, including there's more news coming out about Stetson DoorDash Bennett. Well, not really news, but you'll see what I'm talking about. It's going to be a jam-packed video. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Where shall we start? Okay, okay, okay. Let's just get this out of the way first because I don't want to speak on it too long. We all know that DoorDash Bennett got arrested. I already talked about that enough. If you didn't see that video, go check it out. I'm not here to talk about that, but today, earlier today, about a couple hours ago, check out what the senior bowl executive director, that's a long name or profile, Jim Nagy had to say. He stated that Stetson Bennett is quote unquote, obviously not in a great place right now. Nagy said, and I'm summarizing it up as you can see from this tweet, that Bennett could have really helped himself by participating in the senior bowl. I do want to address this because I think that is flat out stupid and idiotic. One of the worst decisions that Stetson Bennett could have made is participating in the Senior Bowl, and I'll explain why. He's coming off of the best season in his life, and he ended the season on a great note. He couldn't play any better. So since he is on this high note and his upside's at an all-time high, why would you play in the Senior Bowl and jeopardize that? Because of as of right now, according to Mel Kiber Jr., he's a third-round pick. Well, let's say he goes to the Senior Bowl, right? He goes 9 for 17, doesn't look that good. Well, that's going to drop. My point is... Playing in the Senior Bowl isn't going to benefit him whatsoever. His draft stock isn't going to go any higher. So I disagree with that statement. The only benefit of playing in the Senior Bowl would have been more than likely he wouldn't have got arrested. Because if he was preparing for the Senior Bowl, then he wouldn't have been in that situation. But I'm not here to talk about that. He has nothing left to prove whatsoever. If he was 19 for 21 in the Senior Bowl, it wouldn't help his draft stock. So I think that's a straight up bad take. Moving on to our second topic before we get into the main one. Check this out. I'm not going to speak on it too long either. According to Joe Clad, I haven't looked into this too much because it really doesn't matter. There are 39 total five-star recruits in the class of 2023. Let me know in the comment section. I cannot be the only one who feels like we're throwing around five stars left and right. I remember when I was a kid growing up, heck, even four or five years ago, a five-star recruit was a huge deal. There was only 10 to 15 every class. When you heard the term five-star recruit, you immediately thought generational player. And for the most part, that's true. 63% of five-star recruits make it to the NFL. But now we're getting to the point where we got 39 five-star recruits in one class? What are we doing? I get it. Trust me, kids in high school are far more talented now than they were 18, 20 years ago. I'll give you a great example. 10 years ago, somebody did a windmill dunk. It 
was the number one play on Sports Center, but now it's not even making the Sports Center top 10. And that's a basketball reference, but it's the same thing for football. I remember only 10 years ago, somebody went between the legs on a dunk. It was like the greatest thing ever. Now it's like, okay, that's it. What else can you do? And it's great for basketball. It's great for football that all these kids are so talented, but I think we're getting desensitized. Is that the right word? Desensitized to all these great plays and great players. I'm not saying there's not 39 five-star recruits in this recruiting class, but what I am saying is we didn't see these type of numbers three, four, five, six, seven years ago. I think it's too much. I wish they would set a number in stone and say, okay, there can only be 20 five-star recruits. Because what's next? Next year, I guess we're gonna have 45 five-star recruits. It's kind of taken away from the five-star recruit value. Continuing along here, might as well show you the rest of this. And here's something interesting for your train of thought. 22 out of these 39 are heading to the SEC, and it's 29 if you count Oklahoma and Texas. Because remember, Oklahoma and Texas, they're joining the SEC, not this year, but I think it's next year or the year after that, but they're coming soon. Also out of those 39, Alabama has nine of them and Georgia has six in total 15. And let this sink in, Alabama and Georgia are getting 15 of them and the other conferences combined are only getting 17. I saw some people in the replies saying the Big Ten's getting more than one. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The Big Ten isn't even close to the SEC. For example, I saw somebody arguing in the comment section trying to say that, oh, the Big Ten's actually got three four-star recruits, by the way. Like, okay, does that really make any any difference Alabama alone got nine the Big Ten got three interesting stuff speaking of Alabama I think I heard that name yes I did moving on to the main topic of the main encore the main reason you clicked onto this video we gotta talk about them <laughs> I gotta show you guys this video I gotta show you so I don't even know who this guy is maybe I should I, I just don't know who it is off the top of my head there's a video going viral about a Miami I'm going to assume a recruiter giving his sales pitch to these recruits and yeah Matt wrote a clip this is a lifetime. Who doesn't want to be in Miami? All right. This ain't Tuscaloosa. Well, Sundays, Saturdays might be great, but Tuesday. Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Thursday, you still in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. No offense to them, but this is Miami. <laughs> this man trying to make it seem like Tuscaloosa, Alabama is a third world country or something. What are you even trying to say? Oh yeah, Tuscaloosa might be cool on Saturdays and Sundays, but Miami's better on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'm going to assume he's referring to the weather and the city and the spotlight and all that good stuff, and I get that. But at the end of the day, you're trying to recruit football players. You're not trying to recruit OnlyFans girls. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I haven't been to Miami, but I've had plenty of friends go there and tell me how it is. And every single one of them tell me, Matt, it's overrated, don't even think about going. I've been to Florida probably 25, 30 times. I just don't go to Miami because I like to chill and relax. In Miami, Florida, there's no such thing as chilling and relaxing. The best way to describe it is Miami is similar to Las Vegas except for Miami as a beach. How do I say this nicely? I'm going to sum this up and we got to get a move on. Miami is nothing more than drugs and thotties running around. That's all it is. It's a party city. And me, myself, I would not want to be in a party city because I couldn't lock in and focus. That's just me. If you can party all day and all night and still focus on what you need to focus on, I think you're a different breed. And honestly, that could be a recruiting pitch against Miami. There's too many distractions out there to even focus on the game itself. And the only reason kids are going there right now is because they're getting paid. Speaking of getting paid, let's get on to the main topic. We got to talk about these players wanting to get paid and Nick Saban saying, yeah, that ain't happening. There's not really a way to ease into this. One of Nick Saban's current players in a recruit asked for, in total, $1.3 million, and Nick Saban said, kick rocks. Quote, unquote, Nick Saban stated, I'm not paying a kid a bunch of NIL money before he earns it. Saban also stated, quote, unquote, someone with one of the best corners in the nation, in high school, by the way, came to me and asked me if we'd pay them $800,000 for the player to sign here. I told him he can find another place to play. I don't even know what to say about that. The fact that a high school coach would call up Nick Saban and say, hey, will you pay our guy $800,000 to go there? I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Who do you think you are to ask Nick Saban for $800,000? And here's why it's so, the best word I can use is mind boggling to me is because Nick Saban he doesn't need your cornerback. He doesn't need your wide receiver. He's got plenty of them. And it has nothing to do with the $800,000. Even if it was $8, Nick Saban would tell him to kick rocks because it's principles. It's not about the money. It's the principles. It's the same thing about a thief. I hate a thief. That's one of my biggest pet peeves in this life. I don't care if you steal a million dollars from me, a hundred thousand or a hundred or just one dollar or even a penny. You're a thief. I don't like you. It is the principle of it. Now, let me finish this off before I go on a tangent. 
tangent, also, when asked about the portal, Nick Saban said this, We lost 10 players in one starter to the portal this year. One of them wanted $500,000 and for us to get his girlfriend into law school at Alabama and pay for it, I showed him the door. According to this article, it is unknown who Saban is referring to, but everyone is speculating it's about JV on Cohen, which I do agree with because guess what? You know where he transferred? Miami. Why did he transfer there? Because I gave him money. I don't want to single anybody out, but you don't get to be a rocket scientist to figure out. I'm going to say I'm 98% sure it is Javion Cohen, which was the starting offensive lineman. Just put two and two together. It's simple, and I applaud. Let me clap it up. I applaud Nick Saban for doing this. I don't care if you're the second coming of Jesus Christ. We, and when I say we, I'm talking about Alabama. We ain't paying you to come here. If you do choose to come to Alabama and you land some sponsorship brand deal, that's cool. I'm all for it. But we're not Texas ATM or USC or Texas. We're not paying you a dime. Our sales pitch to you is, hey, you come here, we'll make you $25 million because we'll get you to the NFL. You got to make a decision. Do you want quick money at Texas A&M, Texas, and USC, or do you want long-term investment money with Alabama? Let me also read you off what Saban said, and this is what I'm talking about. I think a couple of things are of concern. We allow alumni through collectives to get involved in recruiting and other things. That's always something we've always guarded against in college football. I think what kind of competitive balance are we able to create if we allow that to happen which is not going to be great for fans i said it at the beginning of the video i'm going to say it again name image likeness was created so players could land sponsorships they could land brand deals not so alumni can make up these false companies and sponsor them. I'm going to break this down for you. These are the teams and programs and head coaches that I currently respect. Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Michigan, and eh, I could throw Clemson in there with Dabo Sweeney. They're not paying you a dime to come to their school. Because at Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and Clemson, they've proven they can win without paying players, so they're not going to change their morals. However, at USC... Texas and Texas ATM, they're having to pay these kids. Why? Because they can't win the right way. And oh yeah, Miami, but we've already talked about them and mentioned them. And there's some other schools I missed here and there, but those are the main ones. And I also believe those said schools, Miami, Texas, and USC, are going to struggle to ever win a championship. Why is that? Because they don't have guys there that are really bought into the program like in Alabama like in Ohio State, like a Michigan and like Georgia. I'm going to explain something to you. Miami, didn't they finish with a top five recruiting class or something like that? I think they did. Well, here's the problem with this. These kids, when they're on the field and they get down by seven or 10 points, they're gonna go, eh, I don't care if we lose this game. I'm still getting paid. And I can't blame them. It's the same thing when we go to work every day. If something goes wrong with a machine or something, doesn't affect me. I'm still getting paid. You see what I'm saying? These guys that are getting paid to go to Miami, they're not bought into the program. It's the same thing with USC. All you gotta do is punch them in the mouth one time and they'll bow down. I could sit up here for hours and talk about this. I'm gonna end it off there. Let me know your thoughts down below. Bye, Tyrell.